Okay, Zach, a question. Can you give me an object or something that reminds you of prison? Porridge, man. Alt. <laughs> Anytime I see porridge, okay. it's like, ah, oh, prison, man. That is a good one. Yeah, you know, I used to eat I it all eat the time. Oats every day. Yeah, I, I still eat it now. <laughs> I know, but every time I'm like, oh, I still eat it. Uh, what about you, though? What, what reminds you of prison? Um, An object. Yeah. A plastic fork. Oh, yeah. Or a plastic knife. Yeah. Or a plastic spoon. I have to have metal forks. I think I've got, tr- yeah, I have to have metal forks and plastic yeah. cutlery. I'm Jules and I'm Zach and this is Life After Prison The Sit Down a brand new podcast from National Prison Radio where we open up the discussion about life after prison in each episode we speak to people who have been in prison or have been affected by the criminal justice system yes so family and friends are really important throughout the whole process of being inside we know that it's not just us struggling or suffering inside it's your family and friends on the outside that are going through it as well um for me family and friends were a massive support um it meant so much to me and even thinking about it whilst I was inside and now it's hard it's hard thinking about how it impacted them and what they went through um it, yeah, it, it, it makes me sad. Um, but, you know, it was it, it's definitely a two way thing. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, for me, I didn't realize that me going into prison, how it affected my family, you know, my mum, my dad, my brothers and sisters. I didn't really see that side of it because you're in there until you uh, until you get to a stage where you're like, you know, what? now I see it, you know, and speaking and reflecting um, and talking about how it affects um, family. We've got my mum in the studio today. Hello, mum. Hi, Zach. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Please tell the people about yourself. Yeah, I'm Hilda. I'm Zach's mum. Yes, you and are. I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Hilda. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, That's thanks great. for coming. You too. Um, we also have in the studio with us today... The lovely Tracy. So, hi, Tracy. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you doing, How Tracy? Are you? Good. I'm good, thank you. I'm good. 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 Um... So would you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, um, I'm Tracy and I'm currently supporting my twin sons through a 28-year prison sentence, which they're 14 years into now. And, um, and I just try and make their life e- as easy as, as it can be and be there to support them whatever, whenever they need me, really. <laughs> I mean, I want to kind of move on and say, yeah, but that's quite a lot of yeah. Yeah. detail you've just given us there. And um, thank you, number one, for sharing that. No, that's, I'm really happy to share it. I, 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 if anybody wants to listen to me, I will share my story. Oh, yeah. we love that. Oh, I so love that. Much. Yeah, trust me. Um, okay, so on that note, can you tell us a little bit about your sons and what they're like? Yeah, uh, so my sons are identical twins and they're 39. Um, so it, they've been in that inside for 14 years. Um, and like you, you, you guys just said, I serve the sentence with them, you know, me and my family, and uh, we serve it alongside them. Their brother uh, serves it too. And um, I, I always say, I wish I could have met me now, 14 years ago, because I would have realised there was hope because when it first happened, that I, I just thought it was the end of the world. I was I was devastated, and I do call it a living bereavement because they're alive, but they're not here. They're not part of our lives. We can't have photographs. There's no family meals, stuff like that that you take for granted. Um, but we, where we are now is acceptance because I, I'm a big believer in the. The, the hardest person to forgive is yourself. And my boys, every time I saw them, would apologise and apologise. And I just said, look, this is what it is. We can't change it. So we have to accept it and do the best that we can. And so that's where we are. And I have the most amazing relationship with them because my belief is that it's quality rather than quantity. I've got friends whose kids don't even speak to them for weeks on end. So my boys, uh, they ring me as often as they can. 
I've even had a song written for me by one of them. Oh. So I, I'm really, really oh. close to them. And I was before, but this has just made it even stronger, the relationship. For, and, I, mean, I don't kid myself. I know they need me. <laughs> so I know if they were out with partners and, and, and children, maybe it would be a little bit different. So, but they need me. And, and that's what I signed up for. Oh. You know, you're <laughs> amazing, you. Trace. Yeah. Well, well, I'm a mum. That's what I signed up for them. I, I, I remember when I first went to visit them, a guy said to me, a solicitor said, you know, don't forget them, will you? Always support them. And I just went, really? What What? What wow. do you mean? What, how would I not support them? So, yeah, they're very lucky. They've got lots of other friends and family members that have still continue to support them and miss them and love them dearly. Mm. So they are lucky boys. How did you feel when like they first um went like when you first found out they were going to prison? How did that how were you feeling at that time? Yeah. Gosh. As if somebody had opened the front door and thrown a hand grenade off in the family and we just imploded really. It was just devastating. Um I was scared, really, really scared for them, scared for myself as well. Um, and, from, and for their younger brother, I was really worried about him because he was living away from home. Um, I would go to sleep at night and not want to wake up. Uh -huh. uh, we had to move out of the house for a few weeks, so I lived with my parents for a while. And... Um, I literally, my mum actually got ordered, got a, got a prescription for sleeping tablets because I was just literally like a zombie. I would just stare off into space. I just felt that there was never going to be any way around it, no way of resolving it. And especially when the, the sentence was given and it was 28 years and a recommended 28 years. Mm. Um, I just can't explain how devastated I was. I was I'd lost, you know, I'm supposed to protect my children and I'd lost them. And um, it was a very, very scary time. And I had no one. You don't stand in a queue at Asda and go, guess what's happened to me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's happened to me as well. And I was an I. And I think I've said this before that I wanted to be a we again, you know, with somebody else. And that's when I started reaching out to charities and starting to be proactive. That didn't come though for about 18 months. Okay. I just sort of sat at my kitchen table staring out of the window. I think I frightened my youngest son and I think somebody said to me, think about what you die for, which is your kids and live for that. And I just thought, that's what I've got to do. I mean, that may, I mean, I haven't been in that situation, but what you, everything yeah. you're saying right there, just it sounds, it makes sense. You know, you, you felt like you're on your own and yeah. Like seeing you now today, it's mm. it's nice to see you mm. like this and hear what you're saying to us, you know, yeah. before. Um, that's a really nice place to be. Yeah. Um, we're going to come back to that in, in okay. one yeah. second because we want to touch on a few things. Yeah. Um, but Hilda, I would like to know from you um, what you, how you would describe Zach and, and how you feel about Zach. <laughs> Zach was um, a clever boy. Still is. Oh, my hope was in him. <laughs> and when he came, it comes like he's going to prison. It hit me like a bomb, mm. you know. My heart just dropped. Mm. I cried when I came home from the court. I said, oh, my God, like, there's no hope at all. You know, like Tracy said, there's, there was no hope at all. And I said, oh, my God. And gradually, you know, I started going to see him in the prison. And anytime I come home, you know, I cry. I said, far away, somewhere, you know. And it was so devastating, you know, like, you know, my world is crumbled because he was my hope. Mm. He was the family hope. How did know. it feel when, when I got sentenced then? It was the saddest day of my life on that day mm. you oh you, you're melting my heart <laughs> you know and oh. I came home and I was just sitting down you know staring at the window as Tracy said you know in the kitchen is sitting down quiet and I went upstairs and I cried you know I cried for a while and then I said okay let me pray for him you know I went to see him 
And the day I went to see him with the social, you know, service, mm. and then I came back home, I cried that night, you know, because he was just far away, middle of nowhere, you know, and my son is there, you know, and I, so gradually I just get hope, you know, I said, okay, let me pray for him, you know, and at least he will come back home, you know. So it was very hard, very hard. He was so clever boy. Was it, very um, hard. Was it hard not having him around and, you he know, was, there was a, a long time whilst... Not, not like that. He was going to go to university, you know, so that hit me, you know, it hit me very hard. It hit me very hard. What, that, that I didn't go to uni? That he didn't go to okay. the uni, you know. He was so clever that the teachers called yeah. me and said, yeah. where is Zach, you know? He's so clever. He hasn't been to this, you know, to the lessons, you know, for the C's from college. And I didn't know what to say. What did you say to them? I said, he's been to court and everything and they just banged the phone. Is it? Yeah. Did you know about these phone calls? I oh, boy, before, yeah, yeah, I heard that they, one of them, one of my teachers was all right though, no? No, he called me. Yeah. He called me and said, you know, you haven't been to classes. Okay. Where are you? You know, and I told him about that and they just cut the phone. Wow. You know, and I said, well, I was so, so, so sad, but eventually, you know, I get used to it, you know, because going to see him, I used to come to you in it, yeah, to yeah. see you all the time when I have the chance, you know, and it make me feel, you know, much, you know, a bit better. Good. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I'm glad seeing him my, yeah. inside yeah. looking. And he was okay there, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. and then he would tell me, mommy, don't worry, I will be back and every, I said, I know, I know. So like Tracy touched on, um, sad to say, but like a living bereavement, they're not mm. there, you know, um, which must be so hard to go to these events, like thinking about my family having to go to events and explain why, you know, they're not there. And um, I mean, that must have been so hard. And obviously Zach was in for maybe a total of eight, nine years, yeah, yeah. was it? And it was three three different times. Was it was it different each time, or was it as hard, or was it hard? And it was hard. All all of the three of them, you know. When he comes back, I, I know he's not going back going back there again. And he will go, you know, he go back there again. I said, oh my god, what's happening? You know. But when he came last time, I know he's not going to go there again. I knew. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, to be no, honest. I'm yeah, not I know. To. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You had enough, innit? So yeah, say no, no more. No more. Yeah. Um, and, thanks for that, man. Yeah. So like, yeah. now you can you understand that you know I'm not. No, yeah, okay. I know. I know you're not gonna go back there. And okay. I'm very, very, very Aww. proud of you. That's good. Yeah. Good to know. So, so, so proud of <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Now I sleep. Now I'm okay now. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love hearing yeah. that. Thanks, Mum. Mm. Yeah. Um, Tracy, I wanted to ask, how like for you going through this now with your boys, um, how does it feel going through it at this stage now? And what are what are the methods that you use to cope? How do you cope with your boys being away? Um well, <laughs> I'm quite, I'm a really positive person um, and the boys are very positive and very funny, really funny. My three boys are really funny and with a lot of humour that people might think is a bit strange, but that's how um, we get by. People hear us talking on a visit, we're just laughing and chatting and that's what we do because... Um, we, those visits are very, very special and that's how we, I, I look forward to the visits and it's, I get a little bit nervous still. And it is so beautiful to see how proud you are. I am, yeah. absolutely. I it am. is so yeah. beautiful, yeah. like really is. Um, and also touching on, I love the fact that, oh my God, I think I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. uh, do you, do you yeah don't worry, it's fine, it's all right. That's okay. It's okay, it's okay. You're human. Yeah, I'm sure you're human. I, I didn't used to be this emotional no. for a period of my time. I think yeah. it's coming out now again. Oh, yeah. uh, you're right. Is um, everyone okay? Wait, let's check. Everyone okay? okay. Let's yeah. do a yeah. check. Sometimes, yeah. 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 I, just, yeah. I wanted yeah. to say, like, it was um, really nice to hear how excited you are for visits. Because I don't know about you, Zach. I think we've spoken about this before, yeah. but 
It used to be highlight of my yeah. my weeks. You yeah, know, it's like the forward, best thing. Yeah, getting ready, yeah. even if it was only for a couple of hours. Yeah, making yourself look good, feel yeah. good, see your family and friends, whoever's coming. Mm. Um, and it's yeah, it's like you're going on a night out. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're not if for that moment in the visit, you're not in prison anymore. You're not a prisoner. Yeah, yeah. you're back to you're who back you were. You're back to who you were yeah. previously. Mm. They would always worry though about the journey home because it's about two and a half hours, and so they would worry in case anything happened because it's Likewise. guilt. They always felt guilty about everything. Yeah. They'd always ring, "Are you on your way? Is mm. everything okay? Did and you then, get home? Are you okay? home? Yeah. And, yeah. 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 And if it was an early lock up, then they'd have to wait till the next day to ring. Yeah. And, and so mm. they're stressed about it, but um, but yeah, it's and I. <laughs> There's a tuck shop and uh, we always buy so much rubbish to eat, yeah. sweets and stuff, because I miss eating with them. I mm. miss sitting down and we used to sit down and eat together. And so I use that now and we just sit and we just eat loads of rubbish and everything. They, but they both go, oh, God, feel sick. But yeah. it's it's the only way that I can sit and eat <laughs> yeah. with them again. Yeah, so feeling stuff, sick on a visit yeah. from yeah. food. Is, My yeah. mum used to buy me all this. I'm like, I can't <laughs> yeah, eat this. No. Yeah. You know, I can't eat all yeah, this. Yeah, no, that's it, yeah. 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 yeah, you just try and take what you can from the situation yeah, and make the most of it because that's just really, those two hours are so important and yeah. they go by like that. So so what's it like coming up on a visit then? Since you like, what, what's that? Well, how does it So obviously you say you feel, sometimes you feel nervous, but yeah. like, what does it feel like? What I'm trying to say is from your, pers- from your perspective, because yeah. obviously for us, we're like, yeah, we're excited to see our family. Yeah. How is it for you? Like you coming into a prison, then you're going to come and see you. What's that like? like there's a whole other well, process, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, like, I mean, if they were on the moon, I'd go to the moon. So it's no oh. big deal traveling to see them. It's where they live. It's their home. So it's where I've got to go and see them. So there is something um, uh, similar with you to um, story uh, with having two sons mm. inside at the same time. And I just wanted to, to, to touch on it and ask how that feels and, you know, what, I don't know, because there's, there's, there's two of them in there, yeah. not just one. I don't know about Hilda, but for me, because the twins are very, very close, it's harder for me to have both of them away, but it's not about me, it's about them. And they cope together. They get through this together. Um, you know, they're a tight team and that's why it was worrying about them moving. I don't know if anybody has a relationship with twins, but it's like a couple of aliens. They're very, they're, they're on another level. In twins. Tune. They're so <laughs> in tune with each other. And they've got, because they've moved, they've got the whole, oh, are you twins? And they always go, no, no, we've only just met because they <laughs> think they're funny. And so that would have been really hard. We would have had to have got used to it because that's what you've got to do. But um, and what you can't change. I'm a big believer in. There's no point in going over. If only if I, there's absolutely no point in doing that. So for me, I know it sounds strange, but I'm glad that they're together because right. I know how bad it would be one of them, how they would be away from each other. That would be really hard. Yeah. So that that's my opinion. Yeah. So like, mum, when me and 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 my brother, my younger brother, were it together in prison how was that for you oh that one i was you know i was so happy that two of you are there you know oh. like together you know in that time you were grown yeah yeah you know you were grown so it was not too much worried or anything and you know i was just did you feel like they had a bit more protection together with, yes. with the yes. most than than just one of them being at a time yes yes did you so. feel like that a bit, a bit more. I was stressing even more. No, yeah, okay. because you yeah. called me. Because yeah. obviously, like, so you would call me and you said, "Oh, Beruma is here." Yeah. You know, speak so, to Beruma. Yeah, and for, yeah was, so that helps. I think it, it was helps. good for my mum to mm. know that we're mm. both there. Mm. Yeah. But like, I'm stressing for just you, ma- stress. yeah. Yeah. making mm. sure that you're not messing. He's not yeah. messing about, mm. and, and that he's safe. Yeah, and that, yeah. that he's safe, mm. and he's you know all those kind of things. Mm. So yeah. it's all right. But being obviously we were together in the same in the same cell right, as okay. well, so that was all right until you get until we have our little brother argument. You arguments. were in the same cell. Yeah, yeah. I did not know this, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> wow. A couple times actually, yeah, a couple times. But yeah, that was it. Was all right. It's not bad. You know, who else would you rather, you rather be? share a cell with? You know what <laughs> I was I mean? going to say. Um, so that yeah, that's what you guys have mm. in common. You know, having yeah. two yeah. two sons in at the same time. Mm. Um, I wanted to know how. So for like, for, for you, Trace, and we'll come to you, mum, afterwards, yeah. Um, 
How does the relationship change between like you and your boys since prison? How has that changed? Um, I, I'm really lucky. I've got a really good relationship with all. I've got three sons. My youngest son lives abroad um, and I'm very lucky that um, I'm the only woman in all of their lives. So that's good. <laughs> that's a positive. So, you're the main, um, you're the main lady. <laughs> you are officially the I queen. Am, yeah, they absolutely. Yeah, but my the youngest son's gay, lives. so I'm absolutely the only woman in all of their lives. <laughs> but um, I would say, if anything, like I said before, my, my, my relationship is even better if it could have if it could have got better it's even better they 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 trust me and they speak to me about things and I speak to them about stuff and and at first it was a need to know basis I still don't know exactly what goes on in there because I don't think they want me to know and I don't need to know I don't think I could possibly sleep at night if I knew some of the stuff I I can imagine um but I see them and I see that they're safe and they're healthy and, and, and that's the main thing. But um, we just are there for each other. They know that they can ring me whenever. And and same with them. I think they feel that they need, that I need them as well, which I do. And, and I mean, in the past uh, three years, I've remarried. And so that was a big shock for them. So they were like, who is he? You know, what's his credentials? <laughs> like, you know, they were worried to death about who this yeah. guy was. But it's took away a lot of the stress for them and the pressure of his mum okay because they adore they well, they've actually told him that they love him because oh. he's but he had never met anybody in prison before. And on our first date, I was like, oh, and he said, what do you do? I said, oh, I do a bit for NPR. Oh, that's unusual. Why? Uh, well, uh, actually. And, you know, I thought, is he going to run a mile? But no, he didn't. He stuck around and has completely changed his mind about prison and the criminal justice system and prisoners. And he adores my boys and they love him because, he's, oh, you I know, they've that. been through some tricky times recently. Lost my dad and, and my husband was Sorry there. Sorry to hear. Uh, yeah. Mm. And. You know, the boys adored their granddad. So that was pretty hard. Do you know um, what? That's massive to hear because there's a lot go there's a lot of thought process on if you go away, you know, family ties are ruined yeah. and you know, yeah. uh, they're they're lost and just hearing that is a really beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think also I think when we look at stuff that's gone on like that that's so dreadful and sad and and I would never have met my husband if it's if I hadn't have met somebody through the prison service and because I was in her neck of the woods and we were out having a drink and my husband walked into a bar and it, it, it's what I like to call collateral beauty because mm. it's what's happened mm. that's mm. you know you can't think yeah. oh well if they haven't gone to prison I wouldn't have met him it's just the way the, it is way and it's it is, collateral exactly. beauty Aww. that it's uh that's important as well yeah. to look at the good stuff that's come along 100 percent. and so mum moving on to you I just wanted to ask about relationships um how, what is the difference between our relationship? Like when I was inside and now that I'm out, what are the main differences? Um, when you were inside, the relationship was um, strong as well because you call all, all the time, innit? Yeah. And now I know you are here. You're doing good and I'm happy. And I'm so, so proud of you. Hmm. Yeah, the relationship is okay. What was it like it was before really I went to prison then? If you remember like. Before back. you were there and I was out, you know, out here, you know, so there was no, you know, like relationship or anything, but we were always, you were always calling, innit? Yeah, calling. So the main difference is like me actually being, like, so does it, does it change me being there and being away? It's changed. Yeah. Yeah, very. So yeah, it's because better you are now. here now, it's better, much, much better. Okay. What about before <laughs> what about before Zach went to prison for the first time? What was your relationship like before the first time he went in? It was we were very, very close as well. So you've always you know. been close. Yes. Always been yes. good. Yes. That's yes. nice to hear. Mm. But it's much better now. It's that much, out. much, much, much better. <laughs> Look at her smile <laughs> when she say she's out. And That's I'm really nice. So, so, so proud of you. So proud. I remember good to know. Zach mm -hmm. telling um, so, so proud. me the other time, the other week, or mm. he mentioned that you know he might have said the first time he actually said he loves you was on was yeah. when he was inside. So I think you brought his emotion out yeah. of him. 
Because I think that was the first time. Because you know when you're young, well, I went to prison the first time I was 17. And you know when you're at that age, you don't really want to say, Mum, I love you, Mum. I was like, you know what I'm saying? How's going? So I think it was on the prison phone. Yes. I was like, oh, I love you, I love you, Mum. I said, I love you too. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. How did that feel? And it was feel good, you know, very, very good on that day. And you say, Mum, you're all right. You are, are you okay all the time, you Mm. know, when you call? I said, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm fine. I know you'll come back. I'm fine. It's hard. It was hard, you know. It was hard, but you have to know that at least you come back. Mm-hmm. It's not the end of the world, you know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. staying positive, yeah. like you said, Tracy, yeah. just mm-hmm. holding yeah. on to the yeah. positive. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's mm-hmm. hard. It's hard to hear, you know, how hard <laughs> and what you've got to cope with out there. Mm-hmm. Um, to it's almost as if like we know it or I knew it deep down yeah. but you know like Zach's telling you that he's all right he's good it's does it's, that make a difference when you hear that's because that? that's what we want to do inside yeah. just be yeah. like we're okay how are you like we're fine yeah. how are yeah. you how are you I think if you've got a good relationship with you with your children you can tell yeah and they could tell when I was going I'm fine I'm fine I'm and fine, no, actually yeah. I wasn't so it works both ways I could tell if, mm. if they weren't either um, and I think it's it. You can only say so often, you know. I miss you. I love you. Mm. I wish you were. You can't. I can't put that guilt on them. They guilt. They feel guilty enough without me having to say. I'd, mm. You know, I've had a really bad day. And today. say sorry, sorry all the time. Mommy, all I'm the sorry. Time. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you can't sorry, do that to them. Mm. Yeah. And it must be hard for you to hear that. Mm. And I, I said to my husband before we got here, if ever they get to watch this, I think it would be really hard for them to watch it as well when I'm talking about the stuff that I'm talking about. It is. It, yeah. I think it will be as well because it's it's hard to hear like mm. from just a mother's point of Absolutely, view. Because I yeah. think about my mum and what she must have thought every day, you mm. know, just staying hopeful and staying, yeah. trying to stay positive. And, mm. you know, like Zach said, well, like Zach, um, you're saying about Zach on the phone saying that, you know, we're doing good. That for me, that was like the least I could do was just say I'm doing mm. okay so that mm. you guys would would, mm. would, would, would feel okay. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, Tracy, what kind of journeys have you seen? What kind of journey have you seen your boys go through from? Well, in 14 years, they've grown up. They're almost 40. Um and so I've seen a, a, a big change in them, um, in their maturity, obviously. And, um, you know, it's it, it's been a very hard journey for them as well. And, you know, we were to talk about the guilt, never mind the guilt, but it's just been a hard journey for them. Um, frustrating as well, because, you know, I think if you ask any prisoner, the one thing that they miss more than anything is their family. And friends, and my boys always say they could be staying at the Hilton Hotel, but they'd still be locked inside without us, without their family and their friends. And I think as they've got older, a lot of their friends have got married and had children. And I think that that's been hard for them to see that. Uh, They've had a bit of a, one of them in particular has had a bit of crisis recently, and which has been a massive shock for me. It really worried me. And apparently it's sort of the halfway mark. It's He said, um, you know, I've got to go through all that again. I'm at the halfway. And But the way my husband and I said it to him is, well, coming down has got to be easier than, than going up. And the fact that they're both nearly 40 and they're, you know, they want to get married and have children. So that's been hard for them. What are the most challenging times that you've gone through? I think when my dad died uh, and it was during COVID and there was no visits and I couldn't, I didn't visit them for about 18 months. That was really hard. I think the best thing to come out of visits was the the FaceTime visits. Yes, that, that, purple visits. Yeah, the, well, they were purple visits then, yeah. And they had one with my dad. Oh, uh, they were allowed stop. a photograph that they sent to my dad as well. Oh. Uh, so um, that was one of the hardest periods. Um, and just recently when they moved, that was really scary. I was sort of right out of my comfort zone again, um, worrying that they wouldn't be together. So, um, so yeah, a couple of really scary parts for me, for them, I, I guess there's been other scary bits that they don't share with me. I was going to ask you, Hilda, what... What kind of journey have you have you seen Zach go through and what were your challenges and, and positives as well through the journey that you've seen? Now? Well, yeah, from the process 
yeah. from you know being in and then getting out and what he's doing now. Oh, he's he's doing good. He's he's okay, and he's doing good as well. So that's why it matters to me. He's out now, and he's. Moving on, moving on, moving on, going up, going up, doing things, and I'm so proud. That's all. Mm-hmm. What were the hardest yeah. things for you then? For like whilst I was inside. While you were inside. It was it was so hard, you know. A mother, you know, every mother, you know, if you see your son inside the prison, it was so hard. I never get, you know, used to it at all. You know, you never get used to it. I was never get used to it, you know, because I remember some people, you know, who see you and ask you, you know, and said, I've heard, I've heard that, I've heard this, I've heard um, Zach is inside. I said, so what? You know, he will come back, you know, and I'll come home and it was, you know, very, very sad. But now, you know, people see me and ask me, say, oh, I see your son. He's doing well. He's looking good. And I said, I told you people that that boy was so clever. He will come back and then he will move on with his life. So that Jim Zach. You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> Jim Zach. Yes. So, well done. Yeah. You've done your mum proud. Yeah. Very, very proud. Trying, very I'm proud. trying. Very proud of you. Um, so, obviously, we've been asking you guys a lot about how it's been for you guys. Do you, do you guys want to ask us anything about what, what it's been like in prison, what what prison is like for us. Do you want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was I, it in yeah. prison? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you always yeah. said, oh, we are fine, mommy, don't worry, don't yeah. worry. What do you, you want to know, know, though? I want to know how you go to the, you know, to the, you know, dinner or something like that. Uh, how is the food? How was, you know... Okay, how did cool. you eat, Zach? All right, yeah. so, all right, food, and, yeah. Food, the food ain't the best, I'm being honest, mm. yeah? It's not the best, but... Uh, you, you get used to it. It's a transition, you know. Um, you have ch- There's a lot of choice, to be fair. There's a lot of options. Um, but the good thing is canteen. So when you're sending money to us, like when you've been sending money to your boys as well, mm. you know, when you send, you're allowed to buy certain things. You've got a canteen sheet. Uh, it's like, like a shopping a, list. Like a small shopping list. Yeah, it's like a small oh, shopping list. list. And, uh, but we never see it until you get it. So you do it once a week and then you might get it so you get the sh- you get your sheet on so the you, Sunday. So you could eat better. Yeah, you oh. can get better food. Yeah, but it's mainly tinned items. So yeah. I used to eat a lot of like mackerels, a lot Tuna. of mackerels, tunas, mm. uh, cheesecakes, cheesecakes. Put them on the windowsill. Yeah, yeah. and they'll get cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were There's good. a lot of like creativity. Creativity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was room for creativity. Yeah, um, you got to adapt, haven't you? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. We used to get chicken on Sundays. Mm-hmm. And, and remake the and chicken. And remake the chicken. Yeah. Oh. So you've got some people make jerk chicken, some fried. I don't know if you'd approve of yeah. the, the chicken, but you'd be surprised. It, yeah. was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't yeah? bad. It, it wasn't bad. Don't think you'd approve of the quality of chicken. Yeah, but, you the, know. it wasn't the best quality, but you know what? It we kept did our us best. going. We did our best. Yeah. yeah. Was there any other questions that you guys wanted to ask us? I just, I, I just wanted to ask... You know, the money situation, I have to say to my boys, do you need any money? Do you need money? And I think they feel really bad about asking. And I'm guessing that that's a thing. It is. They're Mm -hmm. 39 years Mm -hmm. old and they think that they should be going to me. Here, mum, treat yourself. I think that's that's a thing for women, men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt the same as soon as I I thought I've done enough, like Mm. as in I've done enough damage to, you know, upset my family. I don't want to... I, I don't want to seem like I'm doing not okay. I don't mm. want to trouble any money. Mm. Um, I don't want to be a burden. Mm. Like, I don't want to yeah, be I like that. that. Yeah. I agree. Um, so I think that's just, I think that's just a thing of maybe like how I felt. And if- Yeah, similar. Like when I, like I used to ask my mum for money, but only when I needed it. When you needed it. So like if I do ask, my mum knows, yeah, he, he needs it. Uh, other yeah. than that, I used to try and get by. Like you, you work in prison. So like they, you got yeah, a job yeah. and it pays you maybe 20 quid a week. But in prison, that's enough to live. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, you can you can live on that. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, as a grown man, you're like, mm. I should be or the one giving, or a grown woman. Mm. I should yeah, be yeah. the one <laughs> giving my mum money yeah. or yeah. giving my parents <laughs> yeah, yeah. money. No. So that is difficult, it is. And, yeah. But I feel like if if we, when I used to ask, it's because I did need it. 
you know so mm. if they do ask they yeah. probably do need it yeah. and if they don't they're fine yeah mm. like, I think don't stress if they don't yeah ask. i think after 14 years we sort of know w- w- what's going on and how much they yeah, need and how and much they, they need and, yeah, yeah and they, yeah. they, they, they got they're, they're in the laundry so they've got yeah. top jobs yeah, and yeah. so yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean they joke they always say you know what girl wouldn't want me i've got my own pad i've got <laughs> i'm not in any debt i'm in every night at six oh, o'clock I so. love that. <laughs> yeah. it's very true um so we touched on it a little bit before, Hilda, but I'm going to ask you again because you did say it before, but, you know, um, do you ever worry about Zach going back to prison? Yes. Is it? Do you worry I about it? I was worried, you know, not what, now. now? I'm, now. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No? Uh, no, of course not. Okay. He's not going back there again. Uh-huh, okay. I know. But before when he was, he, he, he how many... So like the first between the first and the second time were you stressed? Uh, yes. Stressing about me going. Mm. Yes. Okay. But now no. Yeah. Okay. Now he's grown. Oh. He's a grown up man. But well, do you now. feel like it's because I've got older or because you got older and then you learn your mistakes and then you know that oh no you won't put mommy into this situation anymore. Mm. It's enough. So I know you're not going back. He's not going back. I know. Nice yeah, it's yeah. good to hear. That's good to yeah. know. Yeah, uh-huh. no, it is hundred percent. I know. Yeah. Yeah. She's not worried about that anymore. No, yeah. no. Um, no. I also no. wanted to say, Mum, yeah, because mm-hmm. you're quite positive, and so so are you, Tracy. What 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 advice would you like? So, how you stay positive, Mum? How would you um, give someone some advice for if their son's coming out of prison? What would you say to, to another mother or father who's coming out? How to stay positive about? Uh, like someone who's just come out. So when I came out, mm-hmm. you always used to say, oh, don't worry, like you'll be all right, you'll be fine, you used to support me. Yeah. What advice would you give to a parent? Um, just support your son or your daughter, you know, whatever they need, you know, because when they come out, there was nothing there for them. You know, there's no job, nothing, you know. So you just uh, support them with money, even if you don't have little that you have. Just say, oh, take this, you remember? Mm. I said, no, 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 you take it. Say, mommy, I'm fine, I'm fine. I said, no, take it, you know, until you have a job or something like that, you know. So just keep on supporting them with money-wise or when you go to shopping, when I go to shopping, I used to buy you some T-shirt yeah, 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 or clothes. Yeah. And you said, mommy, it's okay. I said, no, 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 no. You just came back. You need it and everything, you know. Yeah. So just keep on supporting mm. them until they get to their feet. You know, like now he is, you are now on your feet. Yeah. You know, I know that you, sometimes you ask me, mommy, you need money. I say, no, mm. you need it yourself. Just keep it. You need it yourself. How do you, you stay know? positive then? Um... I just, you know, know that, you know, I'm, I just know that you're not going back there again and you've grown, you know, and because I was supporting you and um, everything, you know, I know that you're not going back there again. And um, what should I say, you know? She has faith in you. I have faith in you and I have faith in God as well because I always pray, you know. And I know you're okay now, especially when you started there. You told me, you remember, you told me, you said, Mommy, I'm not going back there again. Yeah. It's enough, enough, I've had enough. And I believe in you. I you think know. a massive thing of that, so yeah. well done you for staying yeah. so, supportive you know, as well, in yeah. faith and yeah. supportive and in faith in Zach that he yeah. was, you know, that he is going to get to the position he is now mm. because yeah. he, you are doing amazing. Yeah. Doing um, right. You doing are. Right. Um, which is, you know, it's it it must be hard. So, like, well done, amazing. Um, Thank you. It must be nice. Uh, to hear. And your son gives my, me hope. Yeah, for my son because oh, he's because he's changed and he's grown yeah. and he's turned yeah. his life around. Yeah. And you both give. I've said that to you before. They give me hope uh, because they're both so positive and yeah. and that really uh, it frightens me sometimes when I think about them coming out. Oh, but oh. It, it gives me hope. I know good. I'm the same as you. Yeah. I have faith in my sons that they won't ever go down that road again. Yes. I so. was going to ask you, Tracy. Um, do you ever do you think about your boys coming home yet? Um, um, 
I, I worry about because they'll be on a, a license and I worry that any slightest thing they could, you know, get back, get shit back in, can't they? Because they've, they'll be on a, a license for life because they had a life sentence. Um, it's a bit like planning. Well, I'm not, some people might do this actually planning Christmas in July. I'm not one of those people. So it's a bit like that. It's, it's a long way. And what we do is we live in the moment and we, we do today. And then tomorrow we do tomorrow and we're just really grateful and and anything. We really just try to be grateful for, for small things. Um, and I know there's always somebody worse off than me. I have a, one of my best friends lost her son when he was 10 years old and she would swap places with me tomorrow because I get nearer and nearer to having my son's home yeah. and she gets further away. Well, so really sad. I, yeah. I always think there's somebody... Um, worse off yeah and and i am a very lucky person yes. you know despite everything i've got a fabulous husband i've got an amazing i've got three amazing sons and i'm really really lucky and that's what you've got to what you like i said before what you can't change you've yeah. you've got to accept if you can change it change it but if yeah. you can't yeah. and that's the biggest thing i got through and they got through the sentence by acceptance. I think once you get to that stage, it's a bit like bereavement. I guess you go through the stages, anger, yeah. you know, heartbroken yeah. and yeah. backwards and forwards. When you accept what's happening and this is yeah. the life that's happening for yeah. them, that's when you can start to move on and yes. be proactive yeah. and plan. And I yeah. think that's really important, accepting what's happening. It's not what you planned, but it's what it is. Yeah. So. Um, okay, amazing. I wanted to also ask you if there are any organizations out there that really helped you. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been through a lot, you both have, um, and you know, as well, Hilda, um, so both of you have, is there any organizations you reached out to or that have really helped you go through, go through this? Um, the beginning, because they were young, you know, there were social workers going, you know, you remember I came down yeah. there with a the social worker. And things, and I, the social worker asked me and said, "Do you believe in your son?" I said, "Yes, he will come back and change." You know, now I, I'm looking for that social worker. <laughs> you know, I said, <laughs> she asked me. She said, "She's so clever." I said, "I know she will change one day." Mm. You know, I have a hope in God that she will change. While you are alive, you know there is hope. Mm, absolutely. You know, because I remember when my. Um, your dad, um, nephew died, my cousin, yeah, my you cousin know, his away. cousin was stabbed to death in Stratford, Madonna. He was in the news, mm. you know, everywhere. And the mom said, auntie, I wish my son went to prison. At least I'll go and see him. You know, that give me a shovel, you know, that ah, I wish, you know, that boy went to prison, you know, and so that will give you so much hope so mm. much you know relax that oh my son went to prison he came back and i thank god mm. for that even my other son went in i saw you know my other son my yeah. younger son is inside you know i said he will come back no matter what you know than you know go to the grave or something like that you know so that give you rest as you say in you know that at least mm. they can call you you can talk to them and everything yeah. you know mm. so having hope you just have hope. Yeah. I thank God. For Tracy, were yeah. there any organizations that helped yeah. you? Um, I, it took me a couple of years, but I reached out to a local one in Manchester called uh, Pops Partners of Prisoners. And, um, and they were really supportive. And like I said, it was a we. I was part of lots of people knew what was going on. Lots of people who'd worked there had been to prison themselves or had family in prison. So that, that was, they were really helpful. And uh, Joint Enterprise, the Jengba group, um, I hadn't heard of Joint Enterprise 14 years ago and and they were really helpful. I, I went over and, and met with them a few times and through POPs, I sort of got went over to National Prison Radio with a friend of mine. They were interviewing her because uh, she was the founder of Pops and we became really, really good friends for Rita Anderson. And um, and so it opened other doors as well. Um, and I thought I was helping people, uh, which I guess I am, but I also get so much from it as well, meeting other mums in the same position. Um, you know, you're not the only one. And, and 
And so that I was giving back a little bit as well. Um, but like I said to you before, if anybody wants to stop and listen, I do like to share my story. <laughs> I like to change people's minds and yeah. just say there, but for the grace, you know. So I mean, another reason why we why we're both doing this, want yeah. to do this podcast and why we're doing yeah. it um, mm. is to is to help with that as well. So. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like this conversation we've just had will help other mothers and other parents, other yeah. family members of mm. people who are in prison. You know shed a little light on how to make things better and how to stay strong. And like that they're not alone. Like, yeah. 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 Hopefully, and yeah, that's good. So thank you yes. very much I commend much you guys that. as well. Yeah. For the strength that you've mm-hmm. shown, the love that you show. Yeah. Um, and thank you and for And your that. positivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It means a lot, trust it me. It does. It really it does to see, you know, you guys staying strong and staying, you know, believing in mm. the people inside, yes. you know, it, 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 it works both ways. So thank you for 100%. that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, since we mentioned um, organisations that can support um, family of people who are imprisoned, there are other organisations such as PACT. Um, they support families and children of people who are in prison and uh, people who have convictions. Um, and also there is Prisoners Family Hotline. Um, this is set up to directly help people um, whose family members are in prison, they have a direct line uh, and we'll put all the information of the organisations mentioned in the show notes and other more helpful ones too. Yeah. And don't forget to check out our other podcast called Getting Out. So we have information, advice and guidance for you if you've just been released from prison. Um, so yeah, don't forget to check that out. Yes, and please get in touch with us. We want to know if uh, we'd love to hear about your relationships uh, between your family members and friends uh, when you've got out of prison. And if this has inspired you to get in touch with family, please get in touch with us and let us know. You can contact us um, via email at podcast at prison.radio or you can DM us on Twitter and Instagram at afterprisonpod. Or if you'd like to write to us, you can write to us at Life After Prison, National Prison Radio, HMP Brixton, London, SW25XF. We hope you enjoyed this sit-down episode and we look forward to seeing you soon. Yes. Take care.